Hello everyone, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Today we will be discussing about dynamic programming paradigm in data structure. But before we begin, let me tell you guys that we have daily updates on multiple technologies. So if you are a tech geek in a continuous hunt for latest technological advancements, then consider getting subscribed to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. Now without any further ado, let's get started with the agenda for today's discussion. We'll start this discussion by understanding the real life example of dynamic programming. Following that, we'll go over the dynamic programming introduction. Advancing ahead, we'll deal with the dynamic programming interpretation of Fibonacci series program. Here, we'll cover the complexity analysis of a simple recursive program and how we can reduce it using dynamic programming. Finally, utilizing the Fibonacci sequence program, we'll learn how dynamic programming works. I hope I made myself clear with the agenda. So let's get started with our first topic that is real life example of dynamic programming. Meet Rachel. She enjoys tackling puzzles because they allow her to develop new emerging skills in a fun way. That is why she buys puzzle books from time to time. One day, while reading through one of her puzzle books, she came across a two-player tic-tac-toe game. She discovered one weird fact while reading the rules of this tic-tac-toe game. There are 2,55,168 ways to make a single move in this puzzle game. This fact captivated her interest, encouraging her to begin playing this tic-tac-toe puzzle game. Rachel began playing this game with her friend Alex, who already knew how to play this game. As a result of her repeated failures, Rachel became frustrated and started to question how she could go on a winning streak. After a few games, Rachel started remembering the outcomes of each of her moves which contributed to her failure in previous games. By using those memories of her previous games, she started getting hold of the logic behind object placement in tic-tac-toe puzzle. Rachel's ability to memorize things helped her decide where to place an object on the tic-tac-toe board. As a result of her hard work and commitment to learn from her experiences, she went on a winning streak against Alex. To solve complicated permutation issues, the dynamic programming paradigm employs a similar concept of memorization. Furthermore, this dynamic programming paradigm is completely based on the philosophical idea that people who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it. The dynamic programming principle states that if we can solve smaller sub-problems, then their learnings can be memorized to solve the larger problems. This fundamental notion is acknowledged as a foundation of dynamic programming. Moving ahead, let's look at the broader picture of what is dynamic programming. Dynamic programming is defined as algorithmic paradigm that solves a given complex problem by breaking it into several sub-problems and storing the result of those sub-problems to avoid the computation of same sub-problem over and over again. The divide and conquer strategy is quite similar to the dynamic programming approach. We solve problems in each of these paradigms by combining the solutions of smaller subproblems. However, in divide and conquer, the subproblems do not repeat themselves, whereas in dynamic programming, the condition is entirely opposite. Well, that means dynamic programming has different properties than the divide and conquer approach. And the problems which abide by those properties can only be solved using dynamic programming technique. So moving forward, let's discover the properties of dynamic programming. The first property that we have is optimal substructure. If we can establish a recurrence relation for a given problem, then it is said to have an optimal substructure. To understand this property, let's have a look at an example. The example that we are going to discuss is called the coin change problem, which is one of the most famous DP problems. In this problem, we have to construct a coin combination with the least potential number of coins, resulting in the desired final amount. Let's say we have a limitless supply of $50, $20, $10 and $5 coins and the amount for which we need the least possible number of coins is $85. So to formulate the solution we'll have to traverse through all possible permutations of coins. 
The most logical solution to this problem is to add the coin of largest value at each iteration which does not take us past the expected amount that is $85. That means we break this problem into several iterations by choosing the coin of highest value at each iteration. This conversion of larger problem into smaller subproblems is known as optimal substructure. The next problem we have is an overlapping subproblem. If the subproblems recur while implementing a solution to the broader problem, then that problem is said to have an overlapping subproblems. Formulating recurring relation is the sole technique to determine if a given problem has an optimal subproblem or not. To understand this better, we'll have a look at an example of a Fibonacci series program. But before we get into details of that, we would like to ask you what dynamic programming or competitive programming topic would you like us to address next. You can mention the topics which you have doubts about in the comment section below and we'll surely create an exciting video about it in the next few days. So guys, make sure you post a comment with the DP or competitive programming topics you'd like us to cover in upcoming videos. Now coming back to dynamic programming. We will cover the mathematical interpretation of Fibonacci series program. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. The Fibonacci sequence is a group of numbers that frequently appears in nature. Each number in the series is the sum of two previous numbers that come before it. The sequence goes like 0, 1, 1. 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, and so on. Let's say the n is iterator element to calculate consecutive Fibonacci numbers. And for the first two iterations that are 0 and 1, the resultant Fibonacci values will be simultaneously 0 and 1. Otherwise, the Fibonacci values will be the sum of previous two Fibonacci numbers in the sequence. That means when the value of an iterator element becomes 2, the consecutive Fibonacci number for it will be the sum of previous two numbers in the sequence, that is 0 and 1. So the resulting Fibonacci number will be 1. Now, when the iterator element n becomes equal to 3, the consecutive Fibonacci numbers for it will become 2. For the next iteration, n is equal to 4. The Fibonacci values will be the sum of 1 and 2, that is 3. When n becomes equal to 5, the resultant Fibonacci numbers will be 5. And similarly, the further numbers in sequence can be calculated. And now, if you observe the Fibonacci problem closely, you'll see that the breakdown of bigger problem is done into smaller subproblems in previous slide. This means the Fibonacci sequence problem has an optimal substructure, and the program for the Fibonacci sequence also represents the same. These highlighted statements are representing the recurrence relation in our Fibonacci program. Now what about the overlapping subproblems? Well, a problem is said to have an overlapping subproblems if any subproblem repeats while implementing the solution to the broader or larger problem. Let's say we want to calculate a Fibonacci number for n is equal to 5. The first activation record that will enter the memory stack will be Fib of 5. And to calculate the Fibonacci value for number 5, our recursive program will call function Fib4 and Fib3. Further, to calculate Fib4, the IDA will invoke Fib3 and Fib2. Next, it will calculate the sum of Fib2 and Fib1 to calculate the value of Fib3. And further, it will invoke Fib1 and fib0 to contemplate the value of fib2. Now we have generated the right side of our call stack tree hierarchy. Similarly, the other missing pieces will get calculated by the compiler with the help of recursive calls. Now if you observe this activation hierarchy, you'll get that few subproblems are repeated in this problem. The fib3 has been calculated twice and the fib2 has been calculated three times in our program. This repetition of the same subproblem while solving more significant problem is called as overlapping subproblem property. Due to the multiple calls, the computational complexity of recursive programs almost increases exponentially. 
and those calculations are entirely unnecessary. But before we understand how to avoid all unnecessary computation, let's try to figure out the time complexity of our fifth function. Look at the time complexity relation written over here. This says that the time taken to calculate fiv n will be equal to the time taken to calculate fiv of n minus 1 plus time taken to calculate fiv of n minus 2 plus the time taken to add these numbers together. Clearly, for n is less than or equal to 1, the fiv of n is going to be big of 1 as we are not going to make any recursive calls for them. Also, intuitively, we can say that t of n will take big O of 2 to the power n. We can contemplate this from the recursion tree drawn on the left side. For n is equal to 5, we get a binary tree of depth 5. For n is equal to 4, we get the binary tree of depth 4 and so on. This implies that the time complexity of our algorithm grows at an exponential rate and graph shown on your screens depicts that. Moving ahead, we'll try to understand how we can reduce this computational complexity using dynamic programming. The computational complexity can be removed by memorizing the result of subproblems. In terms of computer science, we can refrain from doing unnecessary computations by utilizing the memory to store the results of subproblems. In dynamic programming, we calculate the result for subproblems and store it in memory allocated by an operating system. When that same subproblems get activated in our call stack, we access the memory in order to return the result that we have calculated previously. Now you must be thinking about how we can store the result in memory. Well, we can store the results in two ways. The first one is memorization and the second one is tabulation. In the case of memorization, we store the result in memory whenever we solve a particular subproblem for the first time. Whereas in the case of tabulation, we percompute the solution in a linear fashion and store them in a tabular format. Memorization is also known as top-down approach, whereas tabulation is known as the bottom-up approach. In general, these names are assigned to these methods based on how they approach problem solving. The first one saves result in memory based on call stack occurrences. The second one, on other hand, solves the subproblem in sequential manner. For the top-down approach, we maintain a lookup table. When we compute any subproblem, we store results in lookup table. And when the recurrence of this subproblem happen, we directly fetch its value from our lookup table. Whereas in the case of bottom-down approach, the solution is built from the bottom-most case. In addition, the memorization process is recursive. However, the tabulation process becomes iterative. If we implement the Fibonacci series program using top-down approach, then the code for function fib will look something like this. And this one additional step, fib n is equal to res, will do the memorization job for us. If we develop a Fibonacci sequence program using bottom-up approach, our program will look something like this. This highlighted for loop part calculates solution to all subproblems from the base case. I hope you guys are clear with both methods of dynamic programming. Now moving ahead, we'll discuss when to implement dynamic programming solution for any given problem. Remember guys, you can solve any problem using dynamic programming which abides by the properties of dynamic programming. Most frequently, you will come across the minimization and maximization problems which are readily recursive in nature. If you need exhaustive solution for these problems, then you can solve them using the dynamic programming paradigm. The permutation combination problems can also be solved using dynamic programming. The problem statement beginning with find the number of ways are the famous permutation problems that can be solved using dynamic programming approach. I hope that you guys have understood how dynamic programming works now. In the upcoming sessions, we'll discuss some trickier and famous problems of dynamic programming. So, if you have any doubts about the concept covered in this video on dynamic programming, then let us know in the comment section below and we'll surely help you get them resolved. Thank you so much for being here and do watch out for more videos from Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.